Theory. The Titans have been using agents to manipulate the Warden, Hawk, the Inquisitor, the Player, into curing the Blighted Titans throughout the entire Dragon Age series. Once the Titans are freed from the Blight, they will return and we will see catastrophic consequences. For the sake of your time and my sanity, I have condensed this theory into a smaller form. If you're interested in the unabridged version, please click the link in the description to hop over to my website and read everything regarding this theory. Now let's break it down into three different parts. Number one, who are the agents? Number two, how and why are they following the Titan's will? And number three, what are the consequences? Number one, who are the agents? Now when I say agents, I mean people who carry out the Titan's will, whether willing, unwilling, or unknowing. While I think this list extends to more people within the Dragon Age series, the people I want to call out specifically are Volta, Liliana, Sandal, and Mithal. Why are they agents of the Titan's will? They match one or more of the following traits. Number one, accepted by the Titans to possess or borrow a power that is normally unimaginable, which includes either magical power or life beyond death. Number two, survive either through the Titan or not be bound by the constraints of their physical body. This includes food, water, sleep, even the body itself. Number three, no sense of time or danger, a lack of recollection as if time is compressed and nothing is wrong. And the most damning yet concrete of all these traits, the possession of insight into the past, present, and future through the Titan's song. The future is never perfectly shown, but the basics are there. Volta became the obvious chosen one in the Descent DLC. She is the reason why we know anything about the Titans, other than a brief snippet of what Dagna says regarding feeling tall and Morgan's son Kieran talking about the Titans in passing. Volta is the player's liaison in discovering the Titans in a, note, positive, reassuring light. She can perform magic now in a capacity that is unheard of throughout all of history and the shipwreck. She does not feed, she does not eat, she does not sleep almost like the Darkspawn themselves. Her sustenance is through the Titan. And all the gaps of everything in history's timeline have been filled through that Titan. She serves as a baseline of what we can expect one under the influence of the Titan is. Liliana only counts if she was killed in Dragon Age Origins at the hand of the hero of Ferelden. In this specific case, at the end of Trespasser DLC, it is found that she borrowed a body of Lyrium up until the end of Inquisition. One day the magic will come back, all of it. Everyone will be just like they were. The shadows will part, and the skies will open wide. When he rises, everyone will see. Sandal also counts because not only did he predict the return of Solus and the sundering of the veil, but also has outstanding power that includes the natural affinity to craft lyrium even blighted red lyrium to his will. Also, he can petrify people, specifically in Dragon Age 2, a darkspawn ogre that refers to not enchantment, in a way that is all too similar to what Solas can do in the Trespasser DLC. Mathal endured despite her murder, still clutching onto the purpose she has yet to fulfill. Ages ago, she sundered a titan, and her people sought to destroy the titans as well, believing they were doing a service and a courtesy to the dwarves stuck under the titan hive mind. She has a curious insight into the future of all things happening in Thetis, from warning the presence of the Fifth Blight to former King Merrick, the rescue of the hero of Ferelden and Alistair from Ostagar, the given information to Morrigan on how to cleanse the Blight from an old god soul all the way to rescuing Hawk and their family by her suspicious convenience to fool the Darkspawn from her presence, and later possibly influencing the Well of Sorrow's plot and Solus's return to power. How and why are they following the Titan's will? These four have inadvertently guided the player, as the hero Ferelden, the champion of Kirkwall as the Inquisitor, in fighting the Blight, the provision of knowledge, the prevention of its spread, the cleansing of its corruption to the already corrupted denizens in Darkspawn of Thetis. Volta gave information on the Titans, more specifically the fact that Lyrium is the blood of the Titans, to the player. That the Blight is an abhorrent infection that has plagued the veins of the Titans since at least the time before the first recorded Blight. But in her interaction, Volta explains the Titan as a kind parental figure, which simply just wanted to kill the Inquisitor. 
as a child of the stone, a dwarf. She follows the Titan's will because she took the gifts forcibly given to her by the Guardian in the Descent DLC. Liliana is the less obvious choice because she serves on the side of mages, the Grey Wardens, and all against the Blight naturally. Yet because it's possible she may not fight by the hero of Ferelden's side during the Battle of Denerim, Liliana's purpose was rejected until a Lyrian body was provided to her, which would mean that the Titan provided her said body. She continued to help the Inquisitor shape the world, which included her influential advice of helping the mages gain freedom and redeeming the Wardens. Serving the Titans through the Lyrian body is not exactly serving the Titans, considering it coincides with her opinion of the world ever since she made it rather clear in Liliana's Songs DLC. Poke fun if you like, if you think it was nothing more than a dash of comedic relief, but Sandal was curiously always there, or caught in a curious position. He slaughtered Darkspawn and sat in front of a door leading straight to the Archdemon in Origins. He did again and paralyzed an ogre into stone within the Deep Roads. He had the capability of crafting blighted Red Lyrium into a rune without a second thought. He stood in a room of dead demons ready to serve right before the big fight with Meredith where she trips out in Red Lyrium. And finally, he delivered the prophecy of Solus's return and the Sundering of the Veil. It's impossible to know why Sandal does what he does as his demeanor always seems kind and lighthearted. But considering his year-long research retreat in the Trespasser DLC, where he impaled a Canari multiple times for invading his personal space, he is engaged in work that he does not want disturbed. Nevertheless, he's always been present when the Blight and the Darkspawn threat is greatest. And Mithal. Oh, there are so many reasons why she would not help the Titans. Why would she get rid of the Taint if it would only help them? The same Titans that she tried to destroy, that her people tried to destroy. She does specifically call the Darkspawn Taint evil, but according to the whispers in the Red Lyrium, once the disease is lifted, the Titans will return, and in full force. She does not want this, yet she does want to end the Blight. Because as she says herself, Alas, so long as the music plays, we dance. I think Mithal is no longer in charge of her own will. She has forced others to carry out her duties for ages. Merrick with the Fifth Blight, the hero of Ferelden with the Archdemon, Morgan with the Old God Orthemiel, Yavanna with the Resurrection of the Great Dragons, Hawk with the Delivery of the Amulet, hell, even Flemeth, who lent her body and spirit to Mithal. Morgan is her only hope of pursuing her original goal, for Morgan has her own soul and she can endure where Mithal and Flemeth could not. The Titan's song has dominance over everything, even after death. The Blight is the same song, but angry. In any form, however, the song is dangerous, and it needs to be silenced. What are the consequences? Why silence the song? The song is the strongest mind-warping influence over all those who are enveloped in it. Those under the song in its blighted state become mad and aggressive, slaughtering or maddening with each pulse. Darkspawn shrieks, Broodmothers. In time, the Grey Wardens join. Only the Architect and Flemeth have found ways to dissolve its song. Through blood, the one entity that blocks one's connection to the Fade. Those under the song in its normal state become enthralled to the point of nothingness. If the user is not made insane or dead, they become devoid of all that they are. Templars with Lyrium addictions after decades of use are the best examples of this mindlessness. At the very least, the Blighted Song is the most dangerous and threatening to all of the Doshans. Archdemons are merely victims in the Blight. The true spread of the taint seems to stem from the corruption of Titans. However, if they are freed from the Blight, they will return. There will be nothing and everything. Valta says that their song sounds isolated, but with your help, they will make you and the rest of Thetis whole. What do I mean by this? It's the same reason why Solus hates the Kuhn, the Evanuris, why identity is such a huge crisis in Thetis. If the Titans spread their influence, there is no individuality, there is no pride in one's achievements, goals, or self. Your existence is dictated by the entity that controls it. It's why the Elves sought to destroy the Titans in the first place. The workers scurry, witless, soulless. This death will be unmercy. We will make the earth blossom with their passing. What is scarier? To be bound to the will of the Evanuris? 
or bound to the will of the Titans. At least with the Evanuris, there is choice. It's almost comforting that Solus wants to tear down the veil, because if the Titans are freed from the Blight, there is nothing that will get in their way, and their influence will limit any possibility of choice. We are here, we have waited, we have slept, we are sundered, we are crippled, we are polluted. We endure, we wait, we have found the dreams again, we will awaken. The Titans have used us to free them. We must stop the song and hope we don't lose our minds in the process. My name is Ash. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Is the song, both the Blight and the Titan hive mind, the most dangerous threat to Thetis? Or is it still Solus and the Sundering of the Veil? Hope to hear from you soon. I'll be back with another overthinking it theory. But for now, take care, fan and unsolved.